right, you guys, I'm here with the man of the hour, Klaus himself, Joseph Morgan. Thanks for having us. We're on the set of The Originals. Thank you for visiting. Uh, this is your humble abode. This is my very humble home, yes. Yeah, what's it been like? You know, obviously the fans know you from The Vampire Diaries, but now you're shooting episode eight of The Originals. Mm -hmm. What does it feel like? You're really in the groove of things now. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's um, initially when you start with a crew, you're sort of all getting to know each other, but we're becoming that kind of well-oiled machine now, getting used to working with um, everybody and finding a groove, and certainly with the other actors as well, developing relationships, really uh, getting used to the different ways people like to work and starting to have a little fun. You know, once you get past the initial uh, getting to know you bit, you can start the teasing and the making fun of... Uh, yeah, who's the biggest so teaser fun. on set? Who has the most fun with that kind of stuff? I don't know. Man. I like to have a little fun with that stuff. Daniel Gillies likes to do it. He and I have always kind of wound each other up. Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, so I like to have a little fun with Charles Michael Davis, you know, that kind of, uh, uh, like, uh, I think you're a great actor, Charles, you know. What happened today? <laughs> that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> I love it. And you can really tell that camaraderie, that relationship, that fun comes across on screen. And I love that you guys just dove right into the backstory right away. Yeah, because yeah. you're not leaving the fans hanging. Well, you are. We always want more information. Um, but talk to me a little bit more about that relationship, the Marcel and Klaus relationship, because I feel like there's more to the story than we've already gotten. There is more right? to the story, yeah. I mean, in the flashback we saw in episode two, uh, we saw how they met when Marcel was a boy and how Klaus took him under his wing. And then we saw, uh, you know, 57 years later, I think it was, uh -huh. when he undaggered Lots Rebecca. Lots of math happening, by the way. Oh, there's so much to remember, you know. It's a <laughs> very complicated uh, state of affairs. Uh, yeah, he, when he pulls the dagger out of Rebecca 57 years later, he's uh, already turned Marcel. But we've never seen, we haven't seen Marcel being turned into a vampire. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen how any of that kind of played out. So I think there's more history there. We also haven't seen what happened when Klaus and his siblings left mm -hmm. New Orleans. Right. And when, you, you know, when Marcel sort of allegedly took over. So there's, there's definitely some more stuff to draw on in, in flashbacks and so on. And what I've loved seeing from Klaus is there's already been some, as I will call them, some precious moments where we've precious seen him, I think, at his most emotional, especially in that moment when he saved Marcel, number one. And then also, again, you know, we're not sure how he feels about the baby, but yeah. it's starting to get better. We're going to be seeing more of those I mean, precious you, moments. You know, you'll see... Uh Equally, you'll, you'll see more of the sort of bloodthirsty moments mm -hmm. as well. I think they all make up uh, They all make up this character of Klaus, but yeah, I mean absolutely. I think there's room to see a little more of his um, Vulnerable side those little moments that sometimes only the audience catch, you know, I, I I'm a fan of those like his secret self moments, yes, I suppose exactly yeah. and I'm assuming there's lots of love brewing um, What's going on with Klaus's romantic endeavors? Nothing. Nothing. No, nothing. No. There's um no. Th He's I not mean, focused on the ladies at all. Not really. No. no. I mean, he has different relationships with people on, uh, y you know, in the quarter, um, and confides in some people and has kind of friends or people that he would regard. He, he doesn't really have friends, but he has people he uh, talks to a little mm -hmm. more, maybe, but. Uh, that he's certainly not romantically pursuing anyone. They haven't, you know, there's been no kiss or anything okay, like that. Okay, there's been you know. no Caroline. No Caroline no in Caroline the series? No Caroline-esque relationships. Our viewers are constantly just tweeting us about Claroline endlessly. Nobody's ever mentioned that to me Have before. Have you never heard of Claroline? Is that, is that a big thing then? Is that something that it's people kind of a thing. are keen on? You might want to Google it. Oh, I will, I will. I'll Google that. <laughs> no, um, there's, you know, look, the, people are uh, extremely keen on it. It's been a huge thing, far bigger than we ever thought. In fact, I think it was the main thing, sort of the main reason that some fans were slightly opposed to the spin-off is like, they well, they won't be in the same place. Right. What's going to happen with these two characters? But, uh, you know, everybody's aware of it. We certainly are respectful of of it and what mm -hmm. people have invested in it and I think it will be made reference to and there's potential for it to be resolved or at least addressed so you know we'll okay see. we're holding on to hope I yeah, like that that's what you I can like do. that now one person that Klaus will be going head-to-head -head with I think in episode four is 
Davina. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, talk about that a little bit. P.S. The name Davina, there's just something about it that sounds so intense. Don't you agree? I do. Doesn't it mean godlike? It comes from divine, divine? doesn't it? Yeah, Smart yeah. Smart man. Uh, it's, I agree. And, you know, Danielle Campbell is fantastic. Really ridiculously talented young actress. Uh, that was my first time working with her in episode four. And she's just great. She's so plugged into her emotions. And, um, you know, she... You, I mean, you saw at the end of episode two when she talks about... Well, she does the little scene with Marcel where they talk about killing an original or how to kill an original. She has this, like, power, this mm, mm-hmm. confidence, which is really like, great. I'm not afraid. Yeah. Like and, you. you know, you see... Uh, it's a. There's also the great... Um, y- you know... Uh, there's the, so there's a great confrontation in in that episode, and it's someone who is uh, the most powerful person Klaus has been uh, faced up to in a while. So yeah, it it was a lot of fun playing all of that stuff. All the stuff in the church was. Uh, yeah, we saw a photo. A I think you tweeted out right yeah. of that altar. I took it from Zap to it. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> yeah, it's a fantastic uh, set. It's my favorite set to work on. I think. We should have a church. We're a vampire show, you know? This, yeah, it's, it's kind very of surprising gothic. to see vampires in a church. I feel like they wouldn't be able to enter yeah, or something. It's sacrilegious, isn't it? Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. All right, so Klaus, as a father, mm-hmm. um, what's going on as far as the pregnancy is concerned? What are we going to be seeing? Are we going to be seeing a baby bump? We're going to see clothes? her stomach slowly swell mm-hmm. with the baby inside it. And do you think this baby is going to be a human? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, uh, a hybrid? I don't know. I don't know. I'd be well, curious maybe. to see the first uh, ultrasound. It's oh, gonna, yeah. You know, um, I don't know. I think there's a lot of people who don't want the baby to be born as well. I think there's, you know, opposing uh, points of view in regards to the baby. So I'll be interested to see what comes out of her if it does make it out in the end. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, no one is ever safe on, on this show, I Nobody's feel like. Nobody's safe, no. Uh, do you feel like any deaths, any surprising deaths are coming for the viewers? Or for you guys as well? I mean, the deaths are always fairly surprising. We don't know a, a huge amount in advance. You know, we hear little whispers about the uh, episodes or like we'll have dinner with Julie and try and plug her for information, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think the stakes have to be set high and so there may be... Um, I mean, there's a death in episode three. And a fate worse than death. Worse than death? Yeah, in my opinion.